Lawmakers on the House Energy and Commerce Panel of Communication and Technology have been buried, in my opinion, rightfully so, in an avalanche of calls from very, very, very angry TikTok users. That's because they've been preparing to vote on a bill that would force ByteDance, which is the owner of TikTok, to sell the app to an American owner or face bans in US app stores. Now, this onslaught of fury was actually organized by ByteDance itself. According to the Wall Street Journal, as lawmakers prepared to consider the legislation, TikTok users saw notifications urging them to complain to their House representatives about the bill. Then the app let people call the representatives with a few presses of buttons. So. Well, let lawmakers and their staffers describe what happened next in their own words, some of them quite interesting. One House Republican aide describes the experience to Rolling Stone as a quote, nonstop barrage of phone calls and messages this week from shrieking teens. Fascinating way to describe your constituents, but of course they did so anonymously, so (laughs) not gonna feel the wrath of that. They continued on, considering the call volume, you'd think we were trying to repeal and replace Obamacare again, which is an absolutely amazing thing for a Republican staffer to admit was deeply unpopular and an affront to the will of the American people that they were supposedly representing. But of course, the fury is not limited just to, as they describe them, shrieking teens. Here's a tweet from Olivia Beavers. One House GOP staffer tells me it's so bad, our phones have not stopped ringing. They're teenagers and old people saying they spend their whole day on the app and we can't take it away. And there was even some collateral damage in this crusade. Democratic lawmaker also tells Rolling Stone that though they aren't even on the House committee leading this charge, My office has been getting a ton of angry phone calls on this matter. It's pretty crazy. I mean, people love TikTok. (laughs) But ironically though, this campaign backfired and made the lawmakers even more determined to pass the bill. Committee member Representative John Curtis said he didn't like that a Chinese owned app tried to quote, manipulate a response from its users. He said that feeling solidified unanimous support for the bill. Another representative stated, I think TikTok made our case for us today. Which by the way, these are representatives bragging about the fact that they're completely ignoring the will of their constituents who've been calling them to voice their opinions. And they're actually saying that hearing what their constituents wanted made them further support the exact opposite of that. And yesterday, the bill unanimously passed the committee 50 to zero. Now, Steve Scalise stated, He would bring the legislation to the House floor for a vote next week. And the bill even has the support of the Biden White House, which ironically just joined TikTok a few weeks ago. Biden said today that he would sign the bill if it passed both chambers, which I think is a fascinating approach considering you know, we just learned that the Biden campaign has been avoiding doing events at college campuses where they would actually be reaching out to young voters because they're afraid of being protested and that Biden is, you know, hemorrhaging vote support from young voters. So then to come out and support a bill that would ban an app that is mostly used by young people, that is beloved by young people in such a fascinating strategy, in my opinion, it just shows such a disconnect with the voters he needs to reach out to and how little he actually cares about their interests. But I don't know, what What do you guys think about this? Should we ban TikTok? A lot of mainstream media don't give you honest news. We do, you know why? Because of you. Paid membership on YouTube makes all the difference. Hit the join button below and you become the hero that sustains us. It's insanity. Um, ironically, it turns out Trump now agrees with us. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, so first off, I love uh, what they're doing on TikTok and calling these Congress people. Um, so number one, I love any kind of activism and I encourage that and we try to do that both uh, on the t- uh, the Young Turks account on TikTok and Instagram and also mine, Cenk Uger official on uh, TikTok and Cenk Uger on Instagram. We try to, uh, I did this on the campaign and we'll do this at the Young Turks going forward. Uh, collect all of your 
uh, input your memes, your videos, and then spread them out as well. Because they're excellent hubs for activism. And that's exactly what TikTok is doing here. And guys, this particular tactic, calling your Congress people, I would love to tell you that that's effective and it's empowering to do it. I don't wanna discourage you from doing it. I like it a lot for the reason I'm about to say. But is it gonna work in any particular case? No, because they don't care about their constituents at all. That's the heart of the problem. They're so corrupt. The only way they would pay attention to you is if you bribe them. I mean, these are legalized bribes called campaign contributions. And in fact, that is part of the issue here. There's a lot of competitors that TikTok has that would love to shut TikTok down. That's part of the problem that they're facing. Another problem that they're facing is that they are galvanizing younger voters. And younger voters are not in favor of the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. And that's why you're seeing these unanimous votes against TikTok in Congress. And it doesn't, and they, they just told you, we haven't gotten this many calls in years and years and years. And then they all vote against you. Why? Because they don't care about you. They don't care about, not, not because you're young, not because you're on TikTok, but because you're a voter. They couldn't care less about voters. All they care about is the money, the money, the money. And now TikTok is, has uh, young people that are so progressive. They don't like the Democratic Party at all. They hate what they're doing in Gaza. Uh, they hate the corruption, etc. And they load the Republicans and the anti-gay, anti-trans, anti-black, all the different things that the Republicans do. So both parties hate the TikTok. But you morons, it isn't TikTok that's doing it. It's that young people are actually progressive and they're expressing themselves on TikTok. If you took TikTok away, they aren't then magically gonna be like, you know what? I kind of love the Republican Party. Ooh, the Democratic Party, oh, more promises without delivering. Oh yeah, now that you took TikTok away, I'm all good. No, that's not how you work. How it works, you schmucks. But people who are politicians can't help themselves, including Joe Biden. I mean, what kind of a thing is it to say, I'm gonna ban you guys, and here's my new TikTok channel, cookies. I mean, make up your mind. You look ridiculous when you say you're going to ban it and you start a TikTok channel. I think realistically, um, it's too late to try. Uh, you know, any real, any talk about banning TikTok is just hollow words. It's too big now, there's too many people on it. It's not even just that people express themselves, but businesses are relying on that. Uh, operations of all different kinds are relying on that, that people get messages across to and that actually adds to the economy. And when you have a conversation about security concerns, yeah, that's absolutely legitimate. But the thing is, is that people can push messages and influence anywhere on any platform, Facebook, Twitter, well, X now, but you know, that the Elon Musk did. Now I'm thinking about Elon, back, back on the subject. <laughs> it, 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 you know, Instagram, any other platform that you use, it, you know, any influence can be pushed. I mean, flat earthers all around the world, you know, you might have one flat earther in, in your community, but because of technology, because of social media now, there's millions of them that can link up. So like if you get if you ban TikTok, you know, and I'm not even talking about from a principal standpoint, I'm just talking about is this gonna work? If you ban TikTok, well, now you still have all these other platforms and all these other avenues to, you know, spew your, you know, the communist threat or whatever it may be. So I just think that now, again, realistically, the amount of resources, how much it would really take to do this, eh, this I, I mean, it could happen, but I would be really surprised if America banned uh, TikTok when there's so much money that's made on it. So I think it's just a bunch of yapping.